Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of Lost in Translation. This time we're covering Digimon Adventure Colon 2020, episode 41, Mon Mon Park in the Fog. I'm May, and this time, of course, I'm joined by the lovely Evie. Hello. Quinn is not making it this week, but she will send us through her thoughts once she's seen the episodes, but that may not be until next week. So, depends on how she feels. She said that whenever she watches the episode, she'll send it through. But uh, anyway, so today it'll be just Evie and myself. And I guess with that, on to the show. The episode starts off with the children being obviously completely understandably exhausted. And Gomamon is giving Joe a back rub. And this is just so nice to see. It's just... It's just really pleasant. I don't know. It's just really nice. Like he's so caring. He's giving his partner a, a back rub. It's just, it's just really cute. And I just really love Goemon so much because he's just a really, really good dog. And he just, he really cares for Joe. And it, just, it is just so nice to see. And also Joe deserves it. Like he's had, he's had a rough time. This is the first sign that I was really sleepy watching this because I heard the lines, but I did not register any visuals of Goemon giving Joe a back rub. Well, it was very cute. I assume it was cute. And I, liked I heard it. the lines. I was like, oh, that sounds cute, whatever it is. But I guess. Well, I, you re- you eyes, read the lines. Eyes didn't work. <laughs> that, that could explain well, it too. I read the line and. Yeah, but I you, did well, your eyes did up. work. They were just. It, it had like a letterbox sort of vision that you're only like looking at the, 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 the words and not the actual animation, I guess. Which I guess yeah. makes sense. Like, when one is tired, I think that our general uh, field of view probably decreases a little bit because, you know, maybe if our eyes are like half closed and we're just only squinting at the words. So that's understandable. So you'll have to take my word for it that it was probably one of the cutest things, except for like, I think it was last episode where we had Takeru and Hikari giving a little like flower crown for Patamon. <gasps> How did I miss that? What is wrong? You missed that? No, that was like... I think uh, I think Quinn missed it too, because because uh, I know she mentioned that she didn't even remember um, Takeru even being in the episode. I'm like, no, no, that, there was a really cute, mo- like, there is because like there was like words happening from like the other characters, and it was just sort of a shot that we had, and they were just making a flower crown, and then they put it on Patamon's head, and oh. it was it was adorable. So I like these sort of interactions that don't necessarily move the plot and don't necessarily, like, have anything to do with what's actually happening, but are just kind of nice moments between the humans and their Digimon partners. And it's always so, like, it's just a soft one. Like, you know, we might have Mimi in a, in a, in a, like, a leaf throne with Palmon. (laughs) Just sort of those cute little soft moments. Like, they're not just standing around and without comparing to the original too much, it does have that over the original, that the original a lot of the time, the characters were just sort of standing around. Like, there may have been some plot happening, but they were either sitting or standing. They weren't, like, doing anything active. Like, in any any shot that we have in this season, we have some cute interactions between the Digimon and their human partners, or we have Koshiro's looking at something on his laptop. Like, also last episode, the other characters were arguing, and Koshiro was actually talking and nobody was listening. Like, he, like, he was talking and he was just reading something on his computer and just no one was listening. So there's just sort of those nice sort of bits that you are easily t- easily missed because they're not like the main focus, but they're just really nice. And I, I really appreciate that from this show. Anyway, so Hikari asks if they're staying the night. And of course we have our mandatory Tailmon saying, well, there's nothing bad around. So I guess we can have a little bit of filler as a treat. Mm-hmm. And this is... It's kind of funny that it's happening now because it's been like, it's been the exact same thing for like four episodes where the characters will say, oh, are we going to do a thing? And then Tailmon will say, okay, there's no danger around, so we we can do a thing. It's just kind of funny. And I guess that's sort of the formula that every episode in this sort of uh, somewhat filler arc is is, is doing. Like we have them, the the kids are tired and they want to, they go to a place or they find a place and they find some Digimon that need help. But I guess I can't really criticize it that much. It, it feels like a better Royal Knights arc from Frontier. Anyway, so Taichi and Agumon say that they'll stay up and scout just in case and Koshra and Tentomon will also do some scouting. 
Then Yamato and Takaru say they're going to look for food, and then we see them there walking along, and Yamato says that Takeru didn't have to come, but Takeru says that he wanted to help too, which is just this really sort of nice sort of... He's, he doesn't want to be just this useless kid, he actually does want to help out the other characters, it's just... It's so nice. And then suddenly it's foggy, and then a random theme park appears, and... Straight away, it just reminds me of Togemon in Toy Town, the episode of, I think it was episode six of the original adventure. Yeah, and it's just six. kind of, yeah. I think I remember that because I'm like, episode six is Mimi's episode in both this season and the original. And six is like my quote unquote lucky number hmm. because I'm born the 6th of June. My first job was in a sweet six and, uh... Yeah, a bunch of other things. I, I I don't have six fingers and toes, though. I only have the normal amount of toes for me, which is ten on each hand. Ten anyway, that was a joke, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that was a joke. That was, that was a joke. No, I have five on each hand and five on each foot. But I do have three feet. Anyway, <laughs> so... What, in height? Hopefully, hopefully more than that. I think I'm... I don't know. I'm 169 centimetres. That's all I know. Is that like five foot? <laughs> Sixty-five. Five. <laughs> nice. Anyway, back to the episode. Um, so yeah, it's just it's kind of reminiscent of Togemon and Toy Town. We have Monzaemon in the center, which I guess spoiler for the end of the episode isn't actually Monzaemon. It's just Waru Monzaemon, which is just bad Monzaemon. Uh-huh. And yeah, sorry for spoiling this episode. That if you're listening to this, you would have probably already watched, unless you just watched the series by me recounting the synopsis, which I guess. You do you, whatever. That can work. Anyway, so Apostlemon shows up and immediately makes herself the most suspicious character in the world by saying, don't worry, I'm not a bad Digimon, which is definitely something a bad Digimon would say. Like, mm-hmm. it's it's like how in the original adventure we had, oh, don't worry, that Digimon's not a bad Digimon, and then you just try to murder the kids. But this time it's so creepy, because why would a Digimon say, I'm not a bad Digimon? It's so suspicious. <laughs> I'm just remembering how awful Agumon's voice acting was back then. Just in like, the in the dub? Yeah. But like, he's a good yeah. Digimon. It gets better though. Anyway, so Opossumon says that the park is empty and she's really excited to have guests, but then Yamato says they're not actually visitors, they're just looking for food. And then Opossumon looks really sad, and this makes Takeru feel bad, so they decide to stay around for a bit. And then Opossumon continues just to be super suspicious. And I know I, I like Opossumon's design, but I'm just so suspicious. Then the characters get to go on a Ferris wheel, and Akaru remembers going to the theme park with his parents and brother, and says how Yamato was scared of the haunted house. And then Yamato says that Takeru was scared of roller coasters, and this is just a really nice sort of... We get to see a bit of their relationship as brothers, and the fact that their parents were together at some point, and it seems that this may have been just before the divorce, so... Yeah, it's just kind of nice to actually see something about characters having a life before the events of the series take place. Same thing with uh, with the last episode, how we had Sora and flashbacks. Like, we're all of a sudden remembering that these characters existed at some point, so that's nice. And I'm then we get. Yep. Is it yep. possible the reference to roller coasters is like a subtle hint at. Do you remember in the original series, the Mushroom episode, with roller coasters? And oh, yeah. And it was Demi Devamon and, and Patamon, wasn't it? Or Tokamon. Did you evolve? I think they were fighting on a Ferris wheel as well. Maybe. But it was definitely a theme park. But yeah, you're right. It, it, that that episode was like... Thing. Yeah. No, I, I completely forgot that that was a, a theme park, but no, good pickup. So that'd be... And that was a Takeru episode as well. So, mm. yeah, it's like a combination between Togemon and Toy Town, because I guess Monzaemon exists, and also, I think the, the English dub name was called Forget About It or something? Yeah, that's it. I yeah, think. It's like anyway. it was the, it, yeah, it was the episode after Home Away From Home, I think. Anyway, <laughs> so we have the kids in a Ferris wheel, they're talking about, they're both having fears, and it's kind of cute, and then we get some really nice flashbacks and then we get more flashbacks of Takeru being on the merry-go-round and I guess Yamato didn't want to go on and Yamato just kind of watched and then suddenly as they're walking along they noticed a hurt Xiaomon which is uh, Labramon's baby form by the way. Very cute. 
just a dog head, but it's a really nice design because it just looks like Labramon because it is just Labramon's head. It's just, you know, the decapitated Labramon. And I just kind of like it. It's just sort of, it's a design I don't think we've really seen much of this Digimon, but it's been around for like since 2003. I don't know, big fan. So then Jaumon says that this place is dangerous and then Opossumon shows up and makes blind giant balloon monsters because I, oh, big surprise, Opossumon was evil. Wow. It only took I'm, I, seven minutes for him to reveal himself. Yeah, it seemed very much a quick sort of reveal. Like, I was just like, yeah, I mean, we already knew that Apostamon was evil, but could we not just play along for a little bit longer? But anyway, so we get these giant balloon monsters, and Patamon evolves to Pegasusmon, and Gobamon evolves to Garurumon to fight the giant balloon monsters. And I know I mentioned this a lot, but it is still so weird that Gobamon has that, like, extended evolution scene yeah, I would actually the- much prefer if it was just the short one just like the one that Pegasusmon has like Patamon to Pegasusmon that's great that's perfect length shows you what you need to see makes it seem like it's real time and then we have Gobamon evolving in just like a, re- a w- random sort of like blank space I don't like these animation scenes oh yeah and they use it like the long one for Wear Guru Mon as well, because they clearly just yep. didn't have enough to fill this episode. Which is like, supr- like, give me more flashbacks. I just really like these flashbacks. Mm-hmm. Like, I would much p- rather prefer the flashbacks. Anyway, so we have Yamato and Takaru getting separated in the fog, and then we get a brief Takeru and Onichan back and forth, and Yamato finds a haunted house. And the best thing is that, and I guess I'm jumping ahead a little bit. But it turns out that nobody was actually, call- like, Takeru wasn't actually calling out Onichan that much. It was actually just balloons with Takeru's face on them. And they were saying Onichan, which is just, is just the funniest thing. Because I was like, oh gosh, we're getting, to- we're getting Onichan, Takeru, again. But no, we weren't. It was just the balloons, which is great. So, uh... Yep, so yeah, Yamato enters the, the haunted house, sees the Takeru balloons, and then meanwhile we have Jaumon saying that his friends were swallowed by a scary thing, and we find out that originally he and his friends were just hiding out from the scary black lightning that is happening, and came across the theme park, and then Bakemon showed up, and all his friends got sucked inside a Monzemon statue, and then a roller coaster suddenly comes off the rail and basically attacks Takeru but uh, sort of distracts Takaru, and Xiaomon gets taken by a Possumon, while in the haunted house, Gururumon is evolving to Wegurumon, again with the weirdly long animation scene, to fight Barkimon, which feels like overkill, but I'm actually pretty happy that it was just a one of like a one-shot kill, because of course it would be, because it's it's a perfect against a, 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 an adult. So that's, I like that. Champion that's just... Basically scraps of dead Digimon as well. Horrifying, but yes. Then we have Pegasusmon charging and Yamato shows up and watches his brother get bored because <laughs> it just keeps on happening. So, oh, I, so I, sorry, I just jumped minutes, ahead. 16 minutes in, we've got Vore. <laughs> we've got Vore, yeah, because it's every episode now. I think, when was the last time we had an episode that wasn't Vore? Because even the Potatomon episode, that one was Vore. We just... I don't know, it's every episode now. I just kind of want an episode that has a plot point that isn't Vor. <laughs> like, it's just, it's just really weird. But no, I, d- I did jump ahead a bit there. So the main part is that Apostlemon drops Xiaomon into the Monzaemon statue, which is why Pegasus One charges into there. And it turns out that Monzaemon is actually Wario Monzaemon. And Apostlemon <laughs> says that Wario Monzaemon is unbeatable because he ate so many Digimon, but he'll be stronger when he eats Pegasusmon. And Apostlemon calls it nutrients, which, interesting take. But again, it's just Vore again. It's like, take your vitamins. I mean, living humans. I don't know. So inside Wario Monzaemon, all these baby Digimon are forced to ride these rides endlessly. And they have these balloons that are sucking all their energy out. And it's kind of horrifying. Like, it's got that eeriness it's it's kind of like horrifying when you think about what's happening and it's also these baby digimon and they're saying how their mind will soon go blank and it's no use to even try 
and then Patamon and Takaru start to get fed on too. And that's kind of horrifying. It's a very horrifying episode. Maybe not as much as the crucified Gabumon episode, but still, still levels of creepy. Anyway, so Yamato can hear Takaru's voice, and he calls out to him and says how he promised they'd go on the merry round, go, go round together. And then we get another flashback where Yamato says that they'll go on the me- merry-go-round next time they see one, which feels like, I don't know, it's, it's kind of cute, but I felt like this flashback could have been placed earlier in the episode because it just sort of feels like... Okay, we just Yamato just says, okay, we we promised that we'd ride the merry-go-round together, and then we we have the flashback. It just feels I don't know. It just feels weirdly put. Like it's like he's just saying I I we promised, and then he immediately mm-hmm. says we promised. It just feels I don't know weird. Maybe yeah. it's just me. It's it's like when the prophecy would only come up as it was relevant. Yeah. This flashback only came up as soon as it was relevant. Yeah, it's it's kind of like we already had the flashback of them being on the merry-go-round. So why didn't we just add, hey, big brother, why aren't you going on the merry-go-round? I don't know, I'm scared, I guess, or I don't like them going round and round because I'm dizzy, I don't know. And then we have, oh, but don't, next time I promise we'll go on the merry-go-round. Have that there, where we have, where we actually have the flashback, not after it's relevant. It was just a weirdly placed flashback. It's like the writers were like, oh, we didn't actually include that, and it's too late to go back, so we'll just insert it here now that it's relevant. It's just weird. Anyway, so Takeru remembers about the promise and Patamon says that he can't give up hope and then a yellow light frees them from their balloons and then this gives the other Digimon hope and that also frees them from the balloons. Patamon grows legs and gets taller, becoming Angelmon again. And this evolution sequence sort of seems to almost imply that Pegasusmon is actually an evolution between Patamon and Angelmon. And this is because there's sort of like a way of how Patamon changes form to something that's sort of resembling Pegasusmon, like mid-evolution. Like he'll, he like expands to be like Pegasusmon with his longer legs and then he sort of stands up. Which is a nice sort of animation, like it's nice to sort of show that. And it makes the appearance of Angemon kind of a little bit more surprising, but also I did get spoiled on Angemon being in this episode, so I kind of expected it, but I would have preferred had I not been spoiled. I feel like this would have been a really cool moment. Oh, uh, think had, what I guessed it, because like, near the start of the episode they mentioned Angemon, so just like, oh okay, Angemon's coming back later. Oh yeah, I, 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 I forgot the uh, the the previously on did say, and then he was Angemon, but then he d- couldn't become Angemon, so he became yeah. Pegasusmon. Yeah, you're right. But Patamon yeah. is growing that, that stronger, <laughs> and may become Angemon yeah. again. Yeah, no, you're right. No, that that part is very is is, is a bit obvious. Yeah, and I mean mm. back on the the previously on that was also a longer than normal previously on. I felt like it felt a little bit longer than the other ones because they had to mention Angemon, I guess. Anyway, so Angemon says that everyone's hope gave, gave him his wings, which is a little bit weird to say that because Pegasusmon already had wings. I'm assuming he just means, like, how he has more wings now, so... Yeah. Or something. So he has four wings got, like, made of hope and two wings from a horse. And what about from Padamon himself? Like, Padamon also has wings. Oh, he yeah. Things. So two hamster wings, two horse wings, two hope wings. Okay, that makes sense. And doesn't like Seraphimon have like ten wings or Wait, something? Or my uh... are Pegasus Mum's wings still hamster wings? I think Pegasus Mum. Wait, no, Pe- Pegasus oh, no, Mum has, has like, like little like heads, wing ears. Yeah. He's yeah, he's got like ti- like he's got weird wing wing ears, which is cute. Which is cute. I like I like Pegasus Mum. I think I like Pegasus Mum more than I like Angemon, and I'm kind of bummed that we get Angemon again. Like I'm kind of like, oh, I guess we're not seeing Pegasus Mum anymore. I think we will just because Takaru so. can ride on top of Pegasus Mum. Oh yeah. Mon. Oh yeah. Yeah, you're right. Tra- traveling is an imp- is important, so that'd be nice, but. I don't know. I think... I feel like Angemon only has two attacks and Pegasusmon has like four or five. He's got Rodeo Gallop, then he's got the Galaxy one, then he's got Silver Braids, and he's got another one that I've forgotten. Yeah, he's just... I, lo- I love Pegasusmon. I'm so happy that Pegasusmon is in this show, to be honest. I'm just very happy about it. Anyway, so... He has his wings now, and Wario Monsamon is defeated, and when he falls, he lands on a Possumon, which is also kills a Possumon as well, <gasps> and kind of horrifying, but, you know, it works. 
And then after the battle, the group continues to look for food and they also promise to each other to ride the next merry-go-round. And then we get a nice pencil coloured style and shot that I guess we have like, it must be that the whoever animated this episode likes those and they animated like the other ones that finished with that pencil style end shot. I don't know, but I absolutely adore when they do that. It's a nice sort of finishing part. I like it. And then we get the Digimon Cyclopedia, and it focuses on Daipenmon, and Koshiro says what the flavours of each of Daipenmon's arms are, and then says that it's secretly his dream to pour every flavour of on t- of syrup onto his shaved ice, and that's just... I, I love this so much. So now we're done with synopsis, let's discuss this episode. What were our highlights? Padamon was mine. Pad- Padamon was my, was my highlight. Patamon existing was my highlight. And also, obviously, the, the Gomamon back rub. But Patamon being in this episode was great. I was happy that we actually got some description of the relationship as brothers that Takeru and Yamato have. And I just really... I just really liked that. It was kind of nice. It was, it felt like more of, more than what we just got last week with Sora and her flashbacks. These ones seemed to have a little bit more emotion behind them. I don't know. I just, I, I liked this. I, I liked, I liked this episode. What about you, Jet? What are your highlights? Uh, I was so tired that my favoritism of Patamon didn't even register this morning. Um, oh no! That's how tired I am. Uh, highlights, highlights. Break the chain was pretty good this week. Yes. I think it is growing. It's like slowly growing on me, but I do still yeah. prefer Be the Winners. Oh yeah, I, I do like Be the Winners. I like I like all the songs. Like this series has quite a good uh, soundtrack. Uh, what else did I like? Hmm. Uh, Gatomon's permission for this to be a filler episode is always just yeah I lo- funny. I like that. Yeah. And yeah, the Pastamon was pretty creepy, and I also like seeing yeah, Chatmon because dogs are just cute. Yeah, well, I I just love I always love the the eeriness of episodes. Like as soon as I get a little bit unsettling and a little bit creepy, I just really just, I I like that. I like how it's kind of creepy. I. I don't know, I liked the haunted house, I liked how Bakemon was there, I like how I'm fairly certain in the flashback with the baby Digimon, there were three Bakemon, but I'm fairly certain I only remember one showing up in this episode, so that's kind of weird, but in general I, I like Morimonzemon existing in this episode, I like the whole unsettling feel of it, I don't know, I... I have a lot of weird miscellaneous highlights for this one. Uh, I do also like that Anjuman is back, but yeah. only because it means we're one step closer to Magna Anjuman, who is just definitively better Anjuman. Yeah, and he's got Heaven's Gate. Yeah, Heaven's Gate is Heaven's Great. Yay! And also it means that we get perfects, because I feel like we are still waiting on just Takeru to have a perfect evolution episode. Mm. Which I wouldn't be surprised if it's like in just a few episodes time. Unless we're just delaying his evolutions, I don't know. Or if Any after the filler arc, it just goes back into the Dark Masters and we just get a rerun. I don't know how I feel about that. I like the Dark Masters, but I also would like if the show was unique. Like, I like how it's kind of separated itself a little bit from the original. Yeah, sure, we did have Devimon being one of the main bosses at the start, but... <laughs> it took twice as long to kill him. It took twice as long, but also somehow less time because we only really fought him for like three episodes. I don't know, it is it's weird. But I like when we are different from the original series. Mm. I like it being different, it's nice. Uh, any other highlights or do you want to move on to lowlights? I really, really like the ending theme. It Oh yeah, the like, new I one, I really yeah. liked it when it first started, but every week I just like it more. It's so good. Yeah. And it's not yeah, creepy sort of like the second one was. I, st- I still love the second one, but it's like... I mean, I think the second one is actually my favourite in terms of animation and song, but the, the the endings do grow on me each week. But I still prefer the second one, because the second one's really good and creepy. But I, I like that. I think we've established that I like the creepy. Anything else? Nope. I, I think okay, I'm low lights. highlights. Okay, low lights. Um, the flashbacks were sad. Yeah, it, but... It, it felt to me it's like good. it was just kind of flashing back to be like, this is when the parents were together and they were happy and even then Yamato didn't really engage with Takaru and just kind of said, yeah, eh, but I'll do it next time. I feel like, one, I feel like 
What would it be nice if we have a shot of the parents looking like they're not getting along, but they're just putting on a brave face because they don't want to upset the children? Like, I'm, I'm sure that a divorce just sort of doesn't sort of happen out of thin air. Like, I'm sure that's something that was that they were building upon. But I, I do actually like that the flashbacks had a bit of a sad tone to them because, I don't know, media is meant to make you feel something, typically, and, and that kind of makes me feel, oh. Takaru, and, and we see that Yamato maybe wasn't, like, well, they were still holding hands. Like, I don't think he wasn't, like, engaging with him, and ma maybe he just didn't want to go on the, the merry-go-round, but he at least promised that he would at some other point. But they were still holding hands. There was still some level of closeness between between them, and I, and I do like that. I think they did kind of hint that the parents were drifting apart by literally just having them stand either side of the kids. I feel like that's that's normal. Like you, you like you know you have the parents on either side of the kids. I don't I don't feel like that's something that's typically out of the ordinary. But th I guess they were kind of it's, based away from each other a little bit. Yeah, it's symbolic of them like pulling the kids apart. That's sad. Oh, and the merry-go-round is also has them separating mm. in the same way that they are separated when the parents take the, like each parent takes a child. And being on the merry-go-round is a, like a metaphor for Takaru being confused about being separated from Aww. Yamato. Aww, poor, poor, poor baby. Meanwhile, Yamato's absolutely fine and <laughs> just watches. Yeah, which is, that's sad. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't really think I have, I mean, the Vore thing is kind of getting a little bit like, can we tell a story without having Digimon eating each other? I know I originally praised this season on a oh, wow where we're just introducing the Digimon need to eat to get power like that that's it's nice when they actually add mechanics and stuff to the show but now it's just like it's every episode where it, we find a Digimon that just is eating other Digimon and the characters decide that that's not okay and then we have the episode happen it just feels like it's every episode now where it's just vor like it was always a joke at the start but now she's like oh it's Time for our vor, time for our allocated digivore. It's just, it's it's getting a little bit weird, but that's basically, I don't know, my only lowlights for that. It's just that it feels just unusual that every motivation for the Mon of the Week is just eating. Like, what was Opossumon's motivation? What was Opossumon getting from this? Yeah, I was wondering that as well. Because, like, he doesn't become any more powerful by feeding... Digimon to Warumonzemon. He's just there. He, he does seem to like Warumonzemon, but that's it. Like, we just know that, oh, he likes Warumonzemon being powerful and really, really likes him. That's it. We didn't get, like... Maybe he just wanted a really strong Digimon to control and he wanted to control the world or something. I don't know, with this Warumonzemon. I don't know, but we never really know. But other than that, I don't really have many lowlights. I kind of just, I liked this episode. It wasn't the best episode, but I just, I liked it. It, it had stuff. Mm. And that's what I look for in an episode, in an episode <laughs> stuff. I do like it when the screen's not just blank. It does make yes. it a bit more interesting. Oh, absolutely. I agree. It's, it is better than watching a blank white wall. <laughs> Any other lowlights? Yeah. Um, the longer Digivolution sequences for Gabumon just padded for time. And just, honestly, just oh, yeah. felt out of place because we've not seen them in so long. I th we have for Greymon, like whenever Greymon evolves, we get those long animation sequences, and I don't like them there. I much prefer the real time, one second long char the the Digimon character is just merging into a, a bigger thing. It's just sort of anamorphing it up. Mm. I much rather prefer those. They make it seem like they're actually happening, like they're real time, as I said, and it makes it feel like I don't know. It it always felt really weird when they had really long evolution sequences because the bad guy is just watching them evolve for like a minute, just standing there, like you know, he's checking his watch, like oh, they're still evolving. Like it just felt kind of weird. Like what time space is this happening in? Like, and that's why I always liked how in our war game, how they, the Oboromon attacked, or Infamon rather, attacked mid-evolution and actually stopped an evolution from happening because he attacked when the Digimon was just standing there glowing and mode, like changing form, I don't know. And I always really liked that. And this season makes it, those evolution times seem like things are actually happening 
in the meantime, like when we had Agamon evolve to Greymon very early in the show, we had Greymon attack like mid evolution, like when he was still like partly Agamon. And that was really cool. That's something that really made me interested in this series. But yeah, I just, I, I really think that the show could do without the longer animation sequences because they just look weird. And I prefer the shorter ones. Mm. I mean, trim down, trim down those digivolution times, and maybe we could have had the flashback to the merry go yeah. round promise. Yeah, absolutely. Like that, that would be would be great. I, I would, I would have liked that. But no, we didn't. We just got this happening. Mm. And so, yeah. Any other lowlights, or are yes. you ready to move on to favorite character? <laughs> you got, I still have you more. Got more? Okay, go ahead. Uh, Yamato's Yamato feels like less of a character than Takaru to me. Yeah, like well, it, that's just, always been sort of the case. Yeah, I mean, it's not been as obvious before because like Takaru in previous seasons hasn't had that much development. He's he's been the cry baby, and then yeah. he learns to cry less. This season, he's been the hope baby. Um, yeah, but. Meanwhile, Yamato is just there, like, all I do is save Takaru or Gabumon, and that's my motivation. He's just making sure that they're safe. And, yeah, it just feels really bland. Like, he's yeah. not, not even on the same level as Taichi anymore, which is weird. And, honestly, now I think about it, I don't think that Yamato and Takaru have spent much time together. I feel like after the Dun Devimon arc, I feel like when they all separated, we just had them being not communicating with each other. Mm. So this is probably the first time we've actually had them interact with each other, and that's kind of weird. Yeah. And, like, did Yamato even look briefly distraught when he saw Takaru being swallowed whole? Or was he just immediately um, like, oh, well, I'm just going to save him? No, I, no, he he did he did have an expression of like shock and concern and like emotion. So so that's fine. Like, I'm mildly concerned. He, he did, like you know, he did he did have emotions. I mean, he had more of emotions than when Taichi was void. But no one had emotions when Taichi was void. Metal Greymon just threw a tantrum. That's about it. Taichi gets void like every other episode at this point. Yeah, like. He he got turned into a fruit last episode, so we just really want to eat Tai Chi, apparently. <laughs> uh, my other complaints are just that basically this is Toad One in Toy Town, but not as good. It's Takaru in Toy Town. Basically, yeah, Takaru in Toy with Town with a really, with a really, really, really suspicious Digimon. Yeah, but like there isn't any of the suspense that came with that original episode. There wasn't like the deception that came with the kids just acting strange and not really know knowing yeah. what was going on. That because episode did hold on to a little bit longer. A Apossumon's idea of tricking them was coming along and just saying, hi, I'm not a bad Digimon. And they were like, yep, that seems reasonable. That was the whole deception. Yep. It was literally just, I'm not a bad Digimon, enjoy the theme park. And then we'll just, yeah, I it. don't know, swallow you later, I guess, after you've had your fun. Yeah. <laughs> What was the point? Just swallow them at the start. They're already there. Yeah, that that, that you're right. That that that's yeah. That that's a really good point, actually. Yeah. And it is literally just like, how can we make it different to Monsemon? We'll just make it Warrior Monsemon. And it didn't even I mean, feel like it mattered because I was expecting it to be a Millennium. Wow, I'm tired. <laughs> no, you said you, you said Millennium, there, yeah. But it wasn't. It was just another Digimon. Randomly abducting baby Digimon. I mean, I do like that it's Waru Monzemon because if there was a giant Waru Monzemon statue, you'd say that's a little bit sus. But if it's a Monzemon statue, it kind of looks a little bit nicer. Mm -hmm. And also, the we when we have the opening of Mon, like the zipper of Monzemon, when we first see that, it just looks like Waru Monzemon's like front stomach zipper, and that was kind of a nice touch that it already was hinting the fact that it's Waru Monzemon. I, I did like that. Yeah. So does he just get back into a Monzemon suit after? No, I think that's just around? specifically. No, I think it's just specifically a disguise because if it was if he was just standing there as a Waru Monzemon, it would be too threatening. Like it was a. Mm. Because, you know, it's Mon Mon Park, it's got Mon Zemon as, like, the, the, te the mascot. I would love to have some backstory on this park. Like, maybe it was originally a Mon Zemon Park and he was just really happy and then, like, people stopped coming and he got depressed and then he became more Mon Zemon. Like, that is also something that we could have had if we didn't have the full-sized evolution sequences. But no. It's just... But no. Takaru in Toy Town. Yeah. <sighs> There's no even, like, happy ending bit. They just walk away, because they've won. Yep. And that's it. Yep. 
They just did it. That's it. Yep. Also, I swear I saw Angemon like make his staff, whatever you want to call it, and then just punch them normally like Kevin's knuckle. So the staff just disappeared. And mm. I don't I don't get it. <laughs> a- Angemon does that all like that's that's not something new. I feel like we've seen Angemon have like the staff that appears and reappears out of a void constantly. It just it just sort of happens. Yeah. It like, sometimes just be a, like that. A really flashy show of him like crafting it from light or whatever. And then literally the next shot he's not even holding it. He's just punching Waru Monzi Mom. Yeah, he, he did the same thing when he appeared earlier in the season when he when we first saw Angemon before he died. He did the same thing. He had like the staff and he was like, This is my staff. Whoop, there it goes. It's just it's weird. Mm. Anything else? No, I think I've vented enough. All right, favorite character? Patamon is cute as always. So I, I chose I'm just gonna pick Takaru. Patamon. Yeah, I, I chose Takaru because otherwise I'd choose Patamon, but I, n- I had a feeling that you were going to choose Patamon, so I was like, oh, I'll give it to Takaru because also very cute. And what uh, rating out of five would you give this episode? A two. Okay, I gave it a I gave it a four. I just I really liked this episode. It was fine, but it's literally just Toadmon in Toy Town done worse. So yeah, I, I don't want to give it too much credit because it just didn't feel no, no, that, that, is fair. that exciting to watch. Oh yeah, I totally um, I, I totally get what you mean. Now we don't have Quinn's review, so, so working out where this episode goes in the overall ranking is something I won't do until next time. But judging by what our historical data that we have. Quinn is usually, like, has the rating between Stevie and, like, sorry, e- Evie and I. Like, uh, we have, like, last episode, I gave it a 4, and Quinn gave it a 3.5, and Evie gave the episode a 2. And I feel like it's, just looking back, yeah, it's always, like, Quinn is between an Evie and a May in ratings. You give them such high ratings. Because I enjoy them, like I, I wouldn't give them ra- these ratings if I didn't enjoy them. Like I've, I've given low, low marks before. Like I've given a few two point fives because there were some really bad episodes. Mm. Like yeah, I've given at least two two point fives because they uh, the really b- no. I gave a two once. I gave a two to episode eighteen, which was the second Omega Mon episode because that was annoying. Yeah. Yeah. So I've, I've definitely gone, gone low, but I'm gen. Generally, I just enjoy this season. Like, I'm just enjoying it. Like, it's just, it's, I try not to overanalyze too much because I know that if I'm overanalyzing it, it's just, it's just, no, no one needs to put that much thought into it because it is just a kid's show. But I try to analyze it enough that I'm still enjoying it. But I think I'd enjoy it anyway. Like, I just really enjoy this show. I like the atmosphere. I like the cute little moments with, the partner Digimon and their humans with just their cute interactions that don't mean anything, but are just really nice to see. There's just a lot that I just like. And I, I, that's why I give a lot of high ratings. I give high ratings because I just enjoy the episodes. Because I I have not enjoyed episodes before. Episode 18, that was <laughs> terrible. But I feel like on the most <laughs> part, I, I enjoy a lot of this. Two out of five. Well, no, a two. I gave it a two. <laughs> A two is not terrible. Is terrible. A two is just like okay. No, it's I think pretty a two, middle like, of the road. Two, no, like a, a two point five is middle of the road. Two is like it, a failing, it's just like, part, like kind failing of grade. Bad. Yeah, and it was kind of bad. There, but there were bits that I liked in that episode. It just wasn't very much. Mm. But it's just yeah, I just I give good ratings because I like this season. Like I, I, there are lots of problems, and there's lots of things that this season could do a lot better. And we've seen that the season can do really well. But there's also there's a the, the season could do a lot worse. So in terms of where I put this in my ranking, I put it in like the middle area. I enjoyed this episode slightly less than last week's episode, even though the flashbacks were more meaningful. Last week had a lot more that I liked, and this episode was just kind of like, oh yeah, there's stuff that I like. So I'm putting it in like 17th place. So yeah, it's just sort of like in the upper middle part, upper as in towards the top, not towards the bottom. And I just, I don't know, I I liked this episode, so it's just above episode 29, Escape the Burning Jungle, and just below episode 40, Strike the Killer Shot. Evie, where are we putting episode 41 in your ranking? Um, between episode 19 and episode 40, so it's like 
going to be sixth from bottom, I think. Yeah, yeah, I, I found it. I already kind of thought that's where you'd put it because you gave the same mark to episode 40, so I was just kind of hovering over that area anyway, so I found it straight mm. away. So there we go. And the overall ranking I will adjust once we get Quinn's thoughts, but I would say that it's probably going to be in around 28th place, depending on if if Quinn likes it, like a lot, like about me, it'll be like in the middle, but if Quinn hates it, it'll be right down the bottom. But if Quinn, and because Quinn usually rates it like between us, if let's say Quinn gives it another 3.5 or a 3, then it will be like, yeah, around 28th place. But that's just, that's just what I'm guessing. But oh. it, I could be completely wrong. Qu- Quinn could say that this is a 5 out of 5 episode <laughs> and just astound everyone. It's but a you, know, you never know. It's going to get like, I think it's going to get maybe a three from Quinn. No, it's a it's a Takeru episode. Like it's I wouldn't say that this episode it's, is a Yamato episode. It's kind of both and does neither well. I th- I think that might be what's hurting it that it's trying to be too much of two different characters episodes and it doesn't give Takeru enough time to shine even though it's his episode. But it is about their relationship. <laughs> Let's move on to questions. So first up, we have Alpha Maragi, who says that they said that Taichi and Sora had great teamwork, so it's really glad that the uh, the show and their Digimon also agrees. And that, that that is nice. It is nice that we had the characters sort of say they have great teamwork. Next, we have Seth, who says that they want Pegasusmon to evolve into Nightmon because the data of Pegasusmon's chest plate could fly off and then come back in the end to form a shield with the crest on it on Nightmon's back. And yeah... That part is super cool. Next, we have Storm Runner, and also Seth says this as well, that they said the fruit that was not the same as the ones on the tree that they took away at the end. But how do we trust them? Like, it's not the same. It's not Pomimon, but it's another Digimon that they're eating. I just don't trust. Yep. Then we have... I mean, the fruit Oneo. didn't say, yep. I'm not a bad fruit. So yeah, so how, how do we know? So how possibly know if it's good or not? Mm. Next, we have Foneo, who says that they agree with us, well, with Quinn and myself, that this episode comes 30 episodes too late. Also, Football Cures Depression is really weak, and, I mean, I, I would disagree with that. It's it's not the football that's curing the depression, it's a mix between the endorphins that physical exercise brings, and also the fact she's doing something that she likes. I don't feel like that's a weak explanation at all, but you're welcome to your own opinion on that, but I, I, I did like the the reason that and the characters sort of say oh you've not been like this for like 40 episodes and she was just like oh i'm just really happy that i got to play football it's just it's nice but but that's just my take on it what what was your take on that by the way because you weren't in the last episode's recording um it felt like an old tai chi episode that they just redid for sora but at least it was sora at least it was a sora episode kind of it was still half tai chi (laughs) Yeah. Uh, next we have Christopher who says that the episode was cool seeing little Ty and little Sora and hopefully in the reboot Ty does not throw up in her hat and give her a hairpin as an apology. I feel like that was a dub only thing. I think in the original it was just like she was upset that he- she got a hairpin but I'm not 100%. Anyway next we have TGS who says that they want Pomamon and Tropiamon as partners. The line is the right rem- the right mix of cool and cute as flower fruit di- dragons and that they hope to see a cool ultimate for them. I think it's Ancient Arismon. I need to look at the Pendulum Zed's roster again, but I'm fairly certain it's just Ancient Arismon, which is also Ooh. very cool. Next, we have Sleek Emu7 who asks us, between these three well-known Digimon openings, which would you choose? Butterfly, Biggest Dreamer, or Dive? So... Ooh. I think I choose Bigger Streamer. I just really, even though I prefer Atmon as a series, I think Bigger Streamer is just a really nice opening. Uh, I'd probably pick Butterfly. That's fair. I I just I have the actual CD for it, and I don't have Bigger Streamer or Diving to the Future. There's so many CDs for Butterfly though. Like it's on every like it's been released so many times. But yeah, mm. no, that's fair. Butterfly is like those three are very good songs. I have the Try version but... on CD as well. Yeah, they're all so good. They're good. And then, lastly, we have Ritster, who asks, Did anyone else notice this? After the first fruit crash landed, it showed Matt holding Takeru back with his arm, and Takeru also holding back Kari with his arm. Takeru was shown with bigger hands than Yamato. Yeah, this show isn't very good with, like, perspective. Like, that is that kind of just keeps on happening. Like, I've just... For the most part, I think I've just ignored the animation being not 
fantastic because it's just it's just a lot a lot of the time. So I just sort of just pay attention to a little. I don't wear my glasses anymore to watch Digimon. <laughs> let's put it that way. If this filler arc just keeps being like redone early episodes of the original adventure, I'm gonna get bored really quickly. Yeah, I I don't feel like this was enough of a rehash, but. You're right about it feeling like the forget about it episode. And Togemon in Toy Town. Yeah, but th- that that one was was already one that I picked up on, but I forgot that the forget about it episode happened. Mm. But it, now it feels like oh, this is yeah, it feels like more. But I don't feel like it's enough. It's not a, a direct sort of retelling or like it doesn't feel like it's exactly the same because the Digimon are different and it just has a different feeling. But I I do see your point. Yeah, it it just feels like it's been recycled. Alright everyone, so thank you for joining us this time and you can join us next time for episode 42, King of Inventors, Garbamon. Do we have any predictions for this week except for the absolutely horrifying image of Garbamon without <laughs> his uh, and I put this in the in the Discord and I'll put it in the in the link dump as well, but it's just Garbamon is horrifying when he do- when he doesn't have the rubbish bin attached to his legs. It's just absolutely just terrifying. Why and, does? He, but I, I, why does he have fully formed hands and then just like normal feet? I don't know. But, I don't I, want to know. It's one of those things. It's up there with Garbamon without his pelt. It's just kind of like one of those Digimon things that I wish never was seen any ever. I just why. Why is this a thing? And and that's my those are my predictions. I will be horrified by Garbamon <laughs> existing, but it looks like maybe Garbamon's not a bad guy. I hope I, it'll be so that'd be nice because the poo monsters tend to be kind of a little bit creepy, and also it's a Koshiro episode apparently, so mm. they can be good. I I trust Koshiro episodes. It seems like Anything? they're doing I don't know like a filler arc so they can finally actually show us that these are characters. Yeah, which is, means that, yeah, it's 30 episodes too late. Yeah, like, I would have liked to see these characters earlier than episode 40. And, yeah. And also for it to not require just an entire arc of nothing particularly important happening. Yeah. But we'll see. Um, like, the, the next time said that is going to gain more knowledge or something, so maybe we're going to find out about unlocking more Mega Digivolutions or we'll get Hercules Computerimon or something. Um, I don't... I don't... I don't think we'll be jumping into the next the Hercules cover term on already. I think we're going to do a little bit more of the the character development before we get to the evolutions. Mm. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if we got the Hercules cover term on, but I don't think that we're going to be doing that. But I could I mean, not. he was he was like close in the Blitz like the Blitz Greymon episode. Yeah. He was already well, yeah, glowing. He, yeah, that silhouette was more of a silhouette than we've had for any of the other characters. Like, we've had sort of like semi hints of what they evolve into, but you couldn't really see it. This one, you could just straight up see. Like, it was clearly Hercules Kabuterimon. In the other ones, they've just pan- been kind of like, oh, if you pause and look here, you can see Rosemon's cape. <laughs> Like, that that's what we've had. Or the Vikemon one, where we didn't even see Vikemon. Or the Phoenixmon one was just like, I don't know if that, I think that's just her attack, or I think Phoenixmon was there, I don't know. So it's just kind of, the other ones have been weird, but Hercules Kabutomon was definitely there. Like, you could see Hercules Kabutomon existing. But mm. I don't know. Also, in the screenshot you shared, it looks like they're watching some sort of explosion. So I think whatever Garfamon's invented hasn't worked properly. <laughs> Yeah, or and also like look at Koshiro's face. He has the cold dead eyes. He does not care about whatever he's looking at. Like, he looks bored. Is it just burning? Is the invention just burning to the ground? Has it malfunctioned? I don't, I don't know. know. But whatever it is, Koshiro doesn't seem to really care. Hmm. Also Chumon's there. Also Chumon's there, which are we going to get Suk if Garbamon is actually like Sukumon evolved, and that's why Chumon's there. I will love that. That is so cute. <laughs> like, please. But it'd be weird just to have Chumon without Sukumon being there. Even though I know that Chumon exists without Sukumon, it makes me feel, oh, and then it was sad. I just remembered Adventure, where we have Chumon showing up and just says, oh yes, yeah, Sukumon died. Like, that was sad. Mm. Next episode okay. could be good, but we'll, yeah, we'll I have just, to wait and see if it's garbage. I don't have a garbage. <laughs> I don't really have high hopes for a lot of episodes going into them, but a Koshiro episode could be potentially not terrible. 
<laughs> but I I try not to expect things from this show. That's probably another reason why I'm enjoying this show so much is that I just don't expect it to go well. Just going with average like, hopes. Yeah, I'm just I go, no, I go in with like low hopes, not average hopes. I go in thinking that this is going to be the worst thing I've ever watched and that's probably why I'm enjoying it so much. Because, you know, I'm not let down. I'm impressed. Oh, look, it wasn't absolutely terrible. Five Four stars. Five. Give it. Give yeah. it. Give it now. Because I, I just like things. I mean, I just yeah, I, I just hope this episode is good. Hope, 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 hope. Anyway, so yes, as I said, thanks for watching. The link dump with the terrifying garbage mon is linked in the description, and so is our red bubble. You can contact us and stay updated. You can send us spam at lostintranslation@gmail.com, or you can comment us on this episode on YouTube, or message us on website or any social media that we have, which is like at Translation on Twitter or Lost in Translation on Tumblr, Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. Yes, I almost flubbed there. I think I can get away with it. Please let me have that. Anyway, we have a screen thread on with the will and you can also find us in the Digimon subreddit. And you could also give us reviews on any podcast catcher that accepts reviews. And if you do, we'll read them out on the show as well. You can also donate to Patreon. And that's linked as in the... Oh, no, I... Oh, no. Oh, no, so I'd lost well. my words. I was doing so well, and then I just could not say linked in the description. For, so I need to change it from description to just like, I've linked it down there. <laughs> Smash that like button. I don't know. What, what, what do the cool kids say? Anyway, so Patreon. Yes, we have one of those. So you can donate from as little as a dollar a month. And that gets you access to a listener Discord server. Almost said Slack, even though we haven't did had the slack for a long time anyway so there are also high levels with things like raw episodes early episodes and more and raw actually means i love you in dinosaur by the way anyway oh. so thank you <laughs> yeah that that's something from 2005 that people used to say that was cool xd anyway so <laughs> thank you to our current supporters on patreon joe Stephen reese who's wildly 64 on archive our own kaidawashi chisai who can follow on twitter at chisai333 those were numbers. Those were. I said that I said through two, three, three. Anyway, two, three, six. Kyle, Elizabeth, who is a Lekman on Tumblr. Nicholas, Metal Maimon, Sam, Anthony, Keith from Gone Will Hunting, a Hunter Hunter Rewatch podcast. Superhead Freak 25, Magnus, Lucas, Blind Man, JC105, and Patrick. And you can also make a one off donation on PayPal, which you found in the description. Hey, I said the word description that time. Go me. So that's paypal.me slash Ergemon. Or you could also donate to me on my coffee account, ko-fi.com slash Edra. So yes, I took a breath that time. That was my problem. So Evie, last time, uh, last episode, I managed to not completely flub the outro, but that's because I didn't breathe the entire time. <laughs> so uh, Quinn was just sitting there like, you got to breathe. you got to breathe air. Air, you got to breathe. Air's, air is important air. But yeah, so that was my problem. Maybe I just should just not breathe ever and then I'll just speak perfectly. Anyway, so Evie, thank you so much for joining me. Where can we find you? You can find me over on the Moncast, where we talk about Pokemon and Digimon. And sometimes I enjoy Pokemon. Sometimes. Sometimes. Lately, yes, because Pokemon has decided to have characters. But I guess you can hear more about that over on the Moncast. So thank you everyone so much for listening to this episode. Thank you Evie for joining me and we will see y'all next time. Bye. Bye. I'm waving. I don't know why I'm waving, but I'm waving. Bye. I'll wait too. Bye. Wave.